wardrobe is another thing that can ruin your film if you don't take it seriously. Um, I had some wardrobe issues on my feature film because I didn't make notes in the script of when people were supposed to be wearing what outfits on what days. I just thought, well, I have enough clothing. I'll figure it out as I go along. But that worked against me. And it's because I never made a project that took place over 17 days in which one outfit, one shirt that someone was wearing on a day we filmed on Tuesday had to match something that we filmed, you know, two weeks later because those scenes took place on the same day, um, but at different locations. So I had never put myself in that situation before because I had never made a feature film. I never made such a long project. I never filmed a project for so many days. So it's little things like that that I was like, okay, I really underestimated how important it is to make notes in my script, what clothing needs to be worn on what scenes, and then transfer that information to my scheduling. Because there were certain days where I'd show up and we'd be missing a shirt and it would be like, okay, we have to film these other scenes while I send someone out to go pick up that shirt and bring it to this location or what have you. Um, and yes, it, it'd be easiest if all this stuff was together, but different people are wearing these clothing and everything. It's hard to keep up with everything if you don't have a wardrobe person on set overlooking and making sure all of the clothing is where it's supposed to be at all times. So as crazy as it sounds, wardrobe was actually an issue on my feature film. I say as crazy as it sounds because uh, I just never expected that. Also, money will have to be spent here. Any materialistic thing, again, money will have to be spent on. So. What I did is I bought a lot of my clothing at secondhand stores, you know, thrift shops, things like that. But I also wrote a script in which I knew the characters were going to be wearing this type of clothing. You could save yourself a lot of money by doing this. Let's say um, your character's wearing a jumpsuit. Well, that's a very easy thing if he's just going to be wearing that same jumpsuit all throughout your entire film. Or maybe um, your film all takes place within 24 hours. Well, that's very easy too, because chances are they're just gonna be wearing the same clothing within that 24 hour period. And you don't have to worry about getting several different clothing outfits. So keep these things in mind when writing your script and how it's going to affect your wardrobe, which will then ultimately affect your film while filming over several days. Props is another thing that could ruin your film if you don't have. Think about it. You're in a, a scene, you're shooting something, and someone's got to have a certain prop with them. It's very important for that particular scene. If you leave that prop at a wrong location or you didn't bring it to set, you can't basically shoot the scene without it. I mean, he can't have, say, a gun in one scene, and then, you know, next thing you know, he doesn't have that gun. It's like, well, what happened to the gun that he was holding? You have to bring whatever prop it is to every every time you have to film and you have to put those notes inside your script. It's very critical. Props are also something that you're going to have to spend money on because, again, it's a materialistic thing. So throughout your script, you should highlight or make bold all of the props that you're going to need in the film because, believe it or not, there will be a lot more props than you actually anticipate. Every time someone sits down in a chair, where's that chair coming from? Every time someone picks up something, if someone's eating something, where's the plates? Where's the spoons? Where are the knives, forks? All these things, are you bringing them to set? Are they already there? How are you getting a hold of these things? There's not going to be somebody there overlooking, making sure all the props are on set. That's probably going to fall on you. These are the type of positions that you don't have the ability to afford to pay for, so you're going to have to supply these things yourself. Keep that all in mind when dealing with props. Ways to save money on props is to use what you have available to you already. Um, I wrote in that they needed to use a lawnmower. I already had a lawnmower. Didn't have to worry about that. Um, anytime you're buying things, they have to look the part. So if it's supposed to be used, buy it at a flea market, buy it at a garage sale. If it's supposed to be brand new, buy it at a dollar store, Walmart, Amazon, um, cheap places where it looks nice on camera, but it probably doesn't function all that well, that doesn't matter. So as long as it looks the part, you're good to go. In my case, I needed some weapons and I didn't want the weapons to look generic or fake. It would have taken everything away from the scenes. So um, luckily, uh, some of the people that were in the film had access to real firearms 
and they were experienced with dealing with real firearms. So they were ex-police officers, things of that nature. And because of that, I had them check the guns, uh, make sure everything was good to go and safe. And then they brought them to set and we used those weapons. It worked out for me. It was one of those type of things that I was very blessed to have fall into place when making my feature film. Storyboarding was something that I did not do with my feature film, and I wish I had. And I'm writing my second feature film right now, and I'm gonna take the extra time to storyboard my entire script. Storyboarding is a luxury to say the least. However, it could be very beneficial for your film. Um, it could be more of your voice and how you really want each scene to play out and you can showcase the film to your actors and explain to them how everything is supposed to look and play out. They could be very beneficial for everyone involved. If you don't have skills to, to draw a storyboard, many times what you can do is have stand-ins and take pictures within the same locations you already know you're gonna film at. If you can do that, if you can take that extra time to do this, that will eliminate the need to actually draw these storyboards and instead just take photographs and make it work that way. It'll allow you to craft a better story. You can figure out your transitions better. Um, you can see the film uh, from far away before you actually shoot it and see what's working and what doesn't and uh, if there's gonna be any issues that may come up. There are certain scenes that I caught on the fly and that's not to mean you can't do that while since you storyboard your film. If you see an opportunity in the moment capture that and incorporate it into your film. Just You'll have a storyboard to say, okay, I can see where I could still splice this in here. That happens several times in my feature film. I just saw an angle, I saw a location and thought we gotta use this. And so I picked it up and incorporated it into the film. So don't think that you have to stick to that storyboard, but it's very helpful to have a storyboard kind of as a guideline to work off of as you're making your feature film. On an independent film, you have to feed your talent. You have to feed your talent, period, no matter what, obviously. But if you're not going to pay your talent, you should feed them. And you should feed them very well. Um, it's really just a no-brainer. People can't work long, eight-hour-plus days without being fed whatsoever or compensated for all of their, their you know, working in some form or fashion. So I tried to pay for all transportation and food when possible. Um, and I say when possible, I mean, I fed everybody. I gave a, a certain budget that everybody could, could kind of get whatever they wanted within that budget. And that's where the majority of my money was spent making my feature film. Um, you know, the, it's, it's a good way to keep morale up. It's a good way to keep people happy. Uh, we filmed outside in the heat all day. I had to keep people hydrated. It's safe for them to stay that way. So I had plenty of water and Gatorade on set. Um, I had, you know, tents set up in, in the shade and things like that because these things are important. Um, so you have to think about safety and you have to think about keeping your, your cast and crew healthy as possible. And uh, that was top of my list. You know, if I could do anything, um, that was going to be definitely where I was going to focus on. Do not be cheap about it. Be as is uh and and plan well you know you have to plan who's gonna pick up the food um when they're gonna get it schedule that out where they're gonna get it from um you know all of those type of details need to be thought through you can't just be like well we'll eat sometime that day at you know break time or whatever it's like where when how because your filming shoot may not go as well as scheduled as you think uh but people will get hungry regardless so you'll have to figure out a solution for catering. You, some sort of person that's gonna be dedicated to taking care of that one way or another. There's no way around it. You will be spending money in this area. If you make a film on a shoestring budget, catering is very, very, very important. Do not overlook it.